Hey, what's up, guys? This is Courtney Truman Steamers. I got my buddy with me again, Samuel. How you doing? So he's going to go do this uh, upholstery job with me that we were supposed to do yesterday, but the, the, the sofas was like, it was a big sectional sofa. So we're about to head there, just sent the uh, alert notification to my client, let her know we're on the way. But you know what, guys? I wanted to do a good video. Samuel actually brought this up, and this is why I like networking and talking to so many people in business, because you just never know the things that you overlook or the things you take for granted or the things that sometimes we don't even think are as important to us that they might be other people. So yesterday, me and Samuel was talking like, you know, about the cleaning business that we love so much. And he told me, he said, Courtney, the, most people don't realize the carpet cleaning and also the cleaning industry too, but, but, but primarily the carpet cleaning industry is the only industry where we basically go into people's private space. Did yep. you say that, Samuel? Yep, closets and more personal space than any other part of the house. And, 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 and when you told me that yesterday, man, it, it really rang a bell. Like, man, it, that I think that is so valuable, not only to us to build that trust factor with the customers, but also the customer themselves. Because see, you know, you and I know being in this industry, sometimes people can just, what we call shop around price shoppers. But the, but my thing is this, I honestly believe there are so many more questions that should be asked before the price. Absolutely. You agree? I do. So with that being said, when, so when you told me that, that yesterday, I said, I got to do a video and I got to do it with Samuel because he's the one that brought this to my you know attention. Because you know what, Samuel, what I was thinking is that, like for example, me and you are owner operators, right? Yes, sir. And, and, and it's a whole lot easier to build that trust factor with customers because they once they get to you, you know us, they you know like us, they like our services, they like our personality. So it's a whole lot easier for a uh, owner operator to build a. Um, I'm not going to say build a better business, but basically build a better clientele of repeats and referrals. You know, that's why a lot of people don't realize. That's why so many of the multi-truck operations have to spend so much money on marketing because they have to keep new customers coming in because they're not keeping the ones that they're already previous, previously working for. Sure. So with that being said is that, like me, if I was to own a multi-truck operation, every job that we would schedule, I would um, have a, like an app or on our website. So let's say if Mrs. Jones was calling, she set up an appointment, right? She will see that specific technician that's coming out. She will see a picture of him. And one thing I thought about this, guys, tell me if this is a good idea or not. If you're a multi-truck operation, you know, reviews are so important. But your bad technicians can really destroy your online presence. My thing is this, if I was a multi-truck operation, I would want some kind of platform or software where instead of reviewing the company, review each technician. Sure. I think that would be a great idea. So let's say if Miss Jones came, you know, she set up an appointment and we say, okay, Miss Jones, uh, John Smith is going to be out tomorrow. When she goes and pull up her information, you know, like we do with the platforms and she see her appointment, she can see the technician that's coming out. She can visually see his face. And also too, if she wanted to do like a background check on that technician, she can see what other people are saying about them. I think that will be a whole lot easier also to on the companies because now the companies, they can actually see who's their uh, better employees to their worst employees. So basically what we talked about yesterday, are you an asset or a liability to my business? Right. See what I'm saying? So I think, that, I think, man, that was so important and what you told me. So just, so just, so just to, you know, get more information about you, how did you come up with that? You know, what you told me yesterday and why do you think it's so important? So it all started out when I was cooking for a country club and the chef um, told his cleaning crew um, manager, he said, your guys aren't cleaning under my counters. And he said, yes, they are. He said, no, they're not. He said, I want to prove it to you. He put a hundred dollar bill underneath the counter and he said, I don't care if it gets returned to me, if they take it or whatever. He said, but I want it gone. And I said, I, he, I don't tell your guys that it's there. Okay. They went back two days later, the $100 bill was still there. 
Wow. They went back five days later, the $100 bill was still there. I believe in the eye in the sky. If a customer calls us out for one room, they may just be calling to find out what's our reputation. Yep. If they're leaving a dollar, if they're leaving jewelry, or you know, they want to see what the company's going to do before they allow you in their whole home. So I do believe in the eye in the sky. Yeah. People are watching. People Whether are you watching. are not believing it or not, people watch. When I bail bonded, we put a leaf in a door just to say, hey, did somebody come home or not? That was our way of knowing if somebody came home. Oh, wow. We watched. You watched. Without watching. Without watching. Yep. I like that, man, because this, that, that is something that I try to educate throughout so many cleaners that so many cleaners don't realize is that they don't. They really don't believe that people are not watching them. I'm like, dude, you are in someone's home. You yeah. like you said, you're in their privacy. You're in their bedrooms, their closets. You know where they raise their kids, where they, uh, you know, spend time with their husbands and their wives. You're in their privacy, and it's and, and, and it just bothers me that a lot of home service industries don't realize that. Sure. You know, it's like. And, and, and the thing about it is, I will hear, like, especially cleaners say this. They'll say, oh, I know I do good work because I don't get callbacks. That's not true. Some, mm. <laughs> Some people don't call you back because they just don't care. They're going to move on. <laughs> Thank you. We need to do a callback to our customer within a couple days. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. I and, just, and find out. I did this the other day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Our pizza shop down the corner. Uh -huh. I went and cleaned, and I never called them back to find out how things went. Five months later, I just ran into him two weeks ago, and I said, man, I never got a heard, you know, and I'm sorry I didn't call you back. How'd it go? He said, actually, we're having the carpet replaced. There's still odor in the carpet, and we just... Oh, man. I said, oh, man, I wish I would have known. I, I would have done more to, you know, save you, but now yeah. they're putting new flooring down. Yep. And it makes you and feel I, bad. I, yeah, it, it yeah. really made me feel horrible. Yeah. I didn't even do a call back. Yeah. And he didn't call me. And he didn't call you. Yep. Because technically, the customer, it's not their job. See, and this is what I believe, especially when I'm dealing with new customers, I, I always call every customer back within 48 hours sure. just to ensure that they're happy with the services. Because sometimes it can be the little things that people might not even want to complain about, but just by you showing that you care. And if there's any issues or any problems we can help, we are here. Sure. And sometimes when people feel that sense of you really care, they don't mind telling you issues. Sure. You know, the thing about it is, again, your personality. How do people feel about you when you're in their house? If you come out to be aggressive or as not as friendly or someone who just feel like, you know, like I have some cleaners say when they go in people's houses, they just kind of like brush them off when they talk with like customers trying to talk to them. They say, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, those people know, you know, these are human beings, you know, we just look at them, you know, we, we think they're just customers. No, these are people. These are people that go to work every day, that deal with people, that raise kids. So they know when you don't want to be bothered. They know when you're just brushing them off, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They know that. So my thing is, why would someone who knows that you don't want to be bothered, why would they go even further of reaching out to you because they have a problem? Sure. See what I'm saying? So that's why I believe that we should open up in our customers' homes, especially when it's a, a occupied home, you know, where they live there, they're there, you get to see their kids, you get to see them eat dinner. Pet we got to become family. You got to become family. You got to become a, a, a... And you'll have repeat business. And you'll right. have repeat business. But remember, you can do a hundred great things in that home. It takes one little minor detail, one small detail, and you're gone. And you're gone. Never to be heard from again. Yep. And so, so, so that's a great thing that you, that, that you brought up, man, to, to basically uh, open up my mind even more. Like, wow, I'm in someone's home, but I'm in someone's private space, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, 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 and you just like, I mean, when you really think about that, that's, that, that, that's, that's very, to me, very valuable. Because I always say this, I'm so grateful for everybody that uses my business because the reason why, they don't have to use me. There's a thousand other that, people behind you. There's a thousand cleaners out here. So what can I do to set myself apart? What can I do to make this customer know this is the guy that I want to use? Not only do I want to use him one time, I want to use him for the rest of my life. The rest of my life. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so my, my so my thing is, man, it, it just it's just so important that we network so important that we talk to other professionals because again guys you know you never know what another another 
cleaner or another professional might know that you don't even think about. I've been doing this since I was 19. You know, I'm 38, so that's 19 years. You've been doing it for 23 years. Yeah. 23 years. So, you know. <laughs> and there's plenty of work out here for all of us. Yes. All of us. Yes. You don't have to be scared of other carpet cleaners. Nope. Yep. That's why I network. I call carpet clean other carpet cleaners to help me. I'm the same all way. The time. All the time. Always got a network. Yeah, always got a network. So, yeah, man. So, guys, I just want to have this good conversation, let you guys hear it. Me, Samuel, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And like I said, man, it just it, understand, especially in the residential setting, when you're going into people's homes, man, appreciate that these people have let you into their homes to perform a service. And also, do also, too, guys, open up to your customers, spend time with them, Re, you know, find something that you can relate to your customers. And, 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 and another thing, too, now we can see here, all, you know, and that's another thing, Samuel, sometimes, you know, we can point fingers at the professional, but to a certain extent, I always say to this, too, sometimes the consumer has to take responsibility. Like, for example, you got these companies that charge a hundred dollars whole house. Well, my thing is this, you know, did you do your research? You know, uh, we both know there's no way me and you could do four rooms for a hundred bucks. I mean, we will be losing money. So it's no need. It, it will basically drive us out of business. I can cut my service. Yeah. But like you went into your shop today at the BMW, Audi. Yeah. They specialize in certain clientele yes so if you're going to go in for a hundred dollars they can't offer what we offer Th that's true so yeah. are we going to downgrade our service or are we gonna it's like um when you go to a restaurant and you go um and order a steak are you going to bring the steak to the restaurant no you're there because they're offering the steak yes you can't bring your own champagne yes i tried to do this with dom perignon one time yeah <laughs> i wanted to bring some dom perignon yeah. to a restaurant and yeah no you can't bring your own yes you're here for our service there you go so don't downgrade your service based on your customer exactly wants. they can find somebody else yep. or have an offering i guess yeah that's what you offer yes so so and 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 and, that, and that's very important uh, and also uh, true that you said that because yes, there are companies that can clean four rooms for a hundred dollars, which is half of the half of the price that we charge. But are they going to get the same thing that we offer? Nine out of ten, no. So you know when I say this is that sometimes, like for example, I would go on some carpet cleaners uh, Google reviews and I would read their reviews, right? And these are companies that are charging like seventy nine dollars for like four or five rooms and the people would like leave negative reviews and say this company did a bad job um you know they weren't professional they wasn't on time and, and and again but again there's always two sides and i think about this i said well you as a consumer should have done your research if i tell people like this all the time if you call me or they call you and we say for five areas 250 but you call another company and they say five areas, a hundred dollars. Why is this gap so big? If they're doing the exact same job, how can one company be a hundred dollars cheaper or even a hundred fifty dollars cheaper than the other company? That doesn't, you know, to me, it shouldn't add up, especially if we're supposed to be doing the same job. So when I say this at the same time, sometimes the consumer has to take responsibility of you support these companies. You know, these companies are in business because you support them. And at the end of the day, like they, that old saying, you get what you pay for. Now, I would like to say something about reviews. Um, I believe all companies will have issues. Yes. And get bad reviews. I've got to. What I want to know is how did the company deal with the issue? Okay. Did they just let it go or did they actually help to try and fix the issue? Yeah. And I wish customers would leave a review on the post review. Yes. Of did they did the company actually go out of their way to try and resolve the problem? Yeah, because all companies are going to deal with problems. Yes, that's true. No and, one's perfect. And just because they have one problem, yeah, doesn't mean it's a horrible company. Exactly. How did they deal with the? How problem? did they deal with the problem? Because you're going to be a fool if you don't think all companies have a problem. Exactly. Because in and, and because it, uh, when it comes to business, at the end of the day, we, that's all we are, problem solvers. That, I'm a problem solver. That's all we are. So can, how can I solve this customer's problem? So if a so if a customer again they call a company, you know, a hundred dollars for the whole house, nine out of ten that company cannot solve your problem, no. because usually like me and you we're going to class this weekend, 
education that costs not only does it cost us money but it costs us time i'm sitting here right now yeah trying to get educated trying to get educated you know <laughs> uh you know the the investment that we put into our tools and our machines um our marketing you know so a lot of that plays in, in, uh, in, into effect of why you have to charge a certain price in business. Sure. So, you know, so I, I just feel like, you know, it, it should, it, it can go both ways. Yes, there are companies that can do it for half the price, but at the end of the day, you're only going to get half of the service, especially like when we know what's really sp what's supposed to be done. When they just come in there, because we hear company, I mean, we hear uh, uh, clients and customers complain about it all the time. I have clients tell me, like, Courtney, you've been here for 30 minutes and the last company were already gone. Yep. You know, we, we haven't even started. We haven't started yet. You know, and what, what are we calling Splash and Dash? <laughs> but again, that's their business model. Yep. They have to be Splash and Dash. They're only charging you hundred dollars for five rooms, so so they don't make their they don't make their money off of quality. They make their money off of quantity. So me and you, I, I I average about three jobs a day. I love doing two to three jobs a day. That's it. I don't have to worry about traffic anymore. Exactly. Six to nine jobs a day. No, yeah, I, I used to do it. And again, when Better you're doing years. exactly, so when you're doing five, six, seven jobs a day. You're rushing through jobs. You're rushing through jobs, you know. Um, and, and that's another good indication to tell if a company, especially in our industry, if, if they're really true cleaners. How many jobs are they doing a day? How many, how many jobs is each truck doing a day? One of my buddies, he worked for one of the largest companies here. I'm not going to say their name on video. But he said each one of those trucks do five to seven jobs a day. I said, no reason why I go behind you guys so much. <laughs> I mean, because again, there's no way you can give top-notch quality services doing five to seven. But our customer might want that in and out real quick yeah. this time. Yeah. And the next time they want the, the detail. The, the detail. That so, could be true too. So, but yeah, man. But knowledge is power. Yep. There's a um, guy that went into a town. Uh, they have a nuclear reactor. And um, they said, can you uh, submit the bill? And so the bill was for a million dollars. And he's like, well, can you itemize that? He was only there for like 10 minutes. Um, he said, sure. He said, uh, $1 um, saving the town, or no, uh, switching a knob, uh, $999,000, um, yeah. knowing what knob to switch. Wow. Yep. His, his, saving the town. So basically, he paid them. Knowledge they, they, pay, they pay for his knowledge. Yep. There you go. Awesome. I thought that was a great Yes, story. sir. <laughs> All right, Samuel. Yes, sir. All right, guys. We about to get to work, so you're going to see us do this. Um this upholstery job next thank you guys so much for tuning in just want to bring up some good conversation enlighten some of you guys minds especially you guys who are in business or thinking about getting business getting into business guys there are so many ways to do it but one thing i'll say as long as you do it the right way as long as your customer understand what you're doing and also to the customer too if you want to hire a company just make sure you know what you're getting i tell people that all the time you can always find someone cheaper, always, but just know what you're getting. So if someone charges you, you know, half the price, just nine out of 10 understand you're probably going to get half of the services. And if you're okay with that, that hey, well, there's nothing wrong with it. All right, guys, see you in the next one.